Universal shift registers are registers are shift registers that can do multiple functions. They can do a parallel load to a parallel shift in to a, a serial shifting out. They could do a serial in to parallel out. They can do a serial in to serial out, and they can shift to the left, they can shift to the right, and they could even do a parallel in and parallel out. And the, the, all this control is done. Do, well, you can't obviously do every th all those same things at the same all those things at the same time. But what you can do is, with some control signals, you can determine whether you're going to shift right, shift left, load, and then you can take that data and output it all at the same time. So shifting to the right, not too complicated. Here we've got a register that shifts to the right, and if you watched the previous video you would have seen this already. Data comes in here and every subsequent clock cycle gets shifted through to the next flip-flop and then it comes into the output. Shifting to the left is not all that complicated either. We just have this our arrows going the other way so the input comes into the rightmost flip-flop the output of the rightmost flip-flop goes to the left flip to the next left flip-flop the output of that flip-flop goes to the leftmost flip-flop and then that output goes to the to the output. So on every clock cycle we get the shifting from this register to this register to this register. Parallel in to parallel out is not too complicated to understand either. Let's just ignore the data in data out on the, on the sides here but the parrots because the parallel in to parallel out would just be these four bits of data are applied to the four flip-flops on the clock edge the four bits of data are going to be output to the QA, QB, QC, and QD outputs. So we've got shift right, shift left, parallel in, parallel out. Now let's put them all together into one circuit. And here is that one circuit. There's my three flip-flops. I can have, well in this case it's showing the left to right action. So our data comes in on the right. What we're going to have to have is this this control signal that's determining whether I'm shifting left or shifting right set to 1 so that's going to come to this, this is set up, this is a multiplexer this is essentially a multiplexer so we're going to have a 1 here which means a 0 here, which means a 1 here, that's going to enable this AND gate so if this is a 1, you'll have a 1 out here, if this is a 0, you'll have a 0 out here and that same control signal is going to all three of these all three of these are labeled AND gates. So the data is coming in here. On the rising edge of the clock, the data is going to be mapped through to the to the output of the flip-flop, and then it'll go through the multiplexer here to the next flip-flop, and then on the next rising edge is going to be mapped through this flip-flop. The data is going to go, that bit's going to go through the multiplexer here to the next flip-flop, the next rising edge it's going to go to the output. So we shifted from the, here's the input, and there's our output in a left to right serial manner. And here's the right to left set up for the same same logic circuit. The data is coming in here on the left. Oh, I guess look at the control signal. The LR signal is set to a zero, which means that this point will be a one, this point will be a zero. So a one here is going to turn this AND gate on, it'll enable this AND gate, it'll enable this AND gate. So the multiplexer is now selecting the from the left. So our data comes in on the left here through the multiplexer. The rising edge of the clock, it gets clocked through to the flip-flop. Comes over here, it gets mapped through this multiplexer into the D input of the next flip-flop. The rising edge of the clock gets mapped through to Q. Goes maps through the multiplexer here. The next rising edge of the flip-flop goes through to Q and then comes out. So we have the coming from the right over to the left. So input on the right, shift it over to the left. What this circuit does not do though, it does not enable parallel load. You see here we only have data coming from the left or data coming in from the right. We need some more logic, we're going to have to add some more control here and some more input signals to allow a parallel input. And that is exactly what this circuit does. We've added another gate here, some more control signals, and now we can have a parallel load. This truth table over here is the truth table that's showing based on our, our control signals. This this is the shift load signal and this is the left right signal. Based on the values of those control signals we're either going to load or we're going to shift left or we are going to shift right. 
So let's just take a look at the, the parallel load. In order to have a parallel load, we are going to have to have the left, well, actually the left-right signal doesn't matter, as you can see from over here, but what does matter is that the shift load signal is set to a zero. So what are we going to have into the, so to the, the, this thing, which is essentially a multiplexer? Okay, so let's let's look at what turns these load AND gates on. By turn on, I mean uh, set them to a one. Set the, set the inputs to a one. Aside from the data input, so that the va it's the value of the data input that determines what comes at the output of the AND gate. Okay, so our shift load is set to a zero. So that means it goes through the inverter. That means this point's a one, and this point here connects to the load. So the input there is a one, and you'll see that the input here is also a one and follow the path over to this AND gate, the input there is also a 1. Now, I said, I think that this truth table is actually wrong, because if we look at the load, there's another control signal here, so this control signal has to also be a 1, which means that point has to be a 0, which means that point has to be a 1, so the left-right would actually have to be a 1 in order, see, 1, Zero, 1. Yeah, it would have to be a 1 in order for our load gates to be turned on. So, this is not true. So, if, if these two are 1s, then it's the value of the DA that will get passed through to here and then ultimately end up at the flip-flop. So, on the rising edge of the clock, the DA value will get mapped through. At the exact same time, since these two points are both 1, the value of DB is going to be mapped through to the D input, so on the right, that same rising edge of the flip-flop, that's going to be mapped through to the output here, and the same thing over here, the rising edge of the, since those two points are both one, the rising edge of the flip-flop, this DC value is passed through the AND gate and the OR gate, and ends up at the input of this flip-flop, and so it'll come out of the output of the flip-flop. So the outputs of the flip-flop, which are the QA, QB, and QC, will all be set to whatever the values of DA, BB, and BC are, if the Shift load is set to a 0, and the left right is set to a 1. And this really is a, a universal shift register. Let's see, we can, we can have a serial in, serial out. We can go to the left, we can shift to the right. We can load data in parallel. And we can also take the data out in parallel. Now, it, just, it would just be a matter of having whatever the parallel, whatever these need to be connected to, uh, there'd be some circuitry down here that's going to ta take these out in parallel. If you don't want things out in parallel, well, then you either just connect here for the shifting left and connect here for the for the shifting right outputs. And we could we could add as many of these blocks as we wanted to to make multiple bit shift registers. You know, you could have five more of these and you'd make it an eight bit universal shift register. And in fact, there are several discrete components that you can get that are universal shift registers that, that uh, implement this functionality and maybe implement some slightly different functionality. And um, you can look up the 7400 and 74000 series of, of uh, discrete logic circuits to get an idea of, of some of those. And w one example of, of a universal shift register logic circuit is the 74ALS299. Um, pretty similar to this one, but it has some some control on the output so that you can you can try state the output or disable the output if you need to. And um, you can take a look on Wikipedia and find find some more examples. And I, I leave it to you as a challenge to figure out find out um, how how some of these circuits work, how some of these other universal shift register circuits work. And hopefully you learned a little bit about universal shift registers today. And I'll see you in the next video.